Hi, I'm Farah, and I'll be guiding you on how you can get creative with this competition to showcase the Taoke's entrepreneurial spirit. I'll be sharing tips on how you can take your learning from the Taoke Talks and translate into a postcard visual of your own. Let's get started! sharing his experience at Taki Talks um, and brought to you by Rise and supported by City Foundation. So I think what really have you finished watching one of the Taoki Talks video? We have over 80 Taoki Talks video for you to choose from. So go ahead and pick one of your favorite Taoki and choose to help that Taoki's voice to be heard. Now for this competition, all you need is 15 by 15 centimeter blank piece of paper. Or if you prefer to draw digitally, as long as it is a perfect square. So feel free to choose whichever method you are most comfortable with. For more information, head over to the Spirit of Malaysian Talke main website. If you're unsure which Talke Talks to choose, simply head over to Talke Talks tab and scroll to the bottom where you will find all the Talke Talks categorized by the industry. So simply pick any industry you like and choose a Talke Talks from there. To submit, head over to submit here and make sure you read all the requirements before submitting and scroll to the bottom and click submit here where you will be referred to the main submission form. Starting is always the hardest part. But if you have already watched one of the Doggy Talks video, then you have already taken the great first step. When you were watching the video, what was memorable to you? What was interesting to you? These are some of the questions that you can ask yourself after watching the video and do remember to write it down. So, taking note while listening is a great way for you to generate your idea later. You don't have to write a full sentence, just write keywords that capture your interest while you're listening to the talkie stories. This will help you to generate the idea later and also to help you decide on the theme for your artwork. For note-taking methods, I like to use mind mapping approach. Mind mapping approach helps me to visualize the story better as I am listening to the Talkie Talks video. As you can see here, this is my example of using the mind mapping approach to take key notes um, that caught my attention from listening to the story shared by Adi from Adi and Ida Talk it Talks video. I don't really have to worry so much about the structure of my notes as I can simply just connect the line later on. It is a free flow method because I can just write it anywhere in the map. This is a quick method and I find it very helpful when it comes to writing down important keynotes instead of writing a whole paragraph. So feel free to explore any other note-taking method that you find most comfortable or convenient. When it comes to selecting a theme, all you have to do is go back to your notes. Now, let's look back at your notes and see what strikes most to you. Was it a particular story that was interesting? Or was it a particular tip that was given by the Taoke that captured your interest? Or was it something inspiring that you heard throughout the talk? Let's look back at my mind map and see how I can find a theme from my notes. The part that captured my attention was how ID Ida was so quick on their feet to pay with their business during the lockdown. So I will highlight this word and the creative solution that they came up with which was to do a home DIY kit. I think that was a very smart move. And they still managed to keep their loyal customer as they had fun building at home. And I was also amazed how they self-taught their way into woodworking where both of them never had any experience with woodworking before starting this business. So I think I'm interested to sort of focus more on um, this story and there I have it. This is my theme that I will move forward with to my sketching. So now I have a theme selected, I can move on to the next step, which is to sketch out my ideas. And I can just simply using the selected keywords that I've chosen as it can help me to narrow down what I need to focus on. Now 
Now that you have defined a theme, the next thing for you to do is to start sketching. But before we dive into sketching of your overall artwork, let's do some warm-up exercise. An easy way to warm up into sketching is to draw one object at a time. So let's take a look of an example of, of how we can do a sketching warm up. So I refer to the keywords I have selected earlier and draw out the first thing that come up to my mind. This is a free flowing exercise, so don't worry about being perfect. So during this process, your brain probably already start to think of a few ideas in mind. That's why this is a great warming up exercise to get your creative juice flowing. Remember, do not worry about your sketch being not perfect. So sketch away and have fun with this creative process. I want to share with you the next following elements which I think are important to keep in mind when you are starting to sketch your visual storytelling. Here are some elements you can look out for while sketching your ideas. So what is a focal point? A focal point is the element that captures your attention. It is the first impression that you have towards your visual. Having a focal point is so important as it can help the viewer to understand what is happening in your visual. A focal point can help to elevate the main elements among other elements that you have in the scene. How do you do that? Well, first you have to decide what is the one main focal point that you want your audience to focus on. It can be a character, or it can be an object, or perhaps it can be the text. So let's take a look at this drawing. What was the first thing that caught your attention? It's this character right here, right? That's because she is wearing a bright orange dress, sitting under the tree, reading a book. Right away, it sort of tells us the mood that the artist is trying to convey, which is the character enjoying the lovely summer weather happening in May. How about this one? What was the first thing that caught your eyes? The first thing that caught my eyes was actually this yellow cat right here. It's placed right in the center of the drawing and it's bright yellow. And right away, I can tell that this is a drawing that's set in New York City. Now that you are familiar with what is a focal point, let's look at how we can play around with focal point by using composition and scale. There are different ways you can make your focal point to stand out, and that is to play with the scale and composition. First, let's understand the simple guide of using the rule of third. You can simply apply the rule of third by drawing a grid on your sketch. So, by placing the rule of third grid on your visual can really help you to find the best placement on your visual. Ideally, you would want to place your focal point on the line of the rule of third. It will help to make your composition to look more interesting. You can also use this to help you as a guide to place your focal point exactly in the middle of your drawing. It will help to make sure that it is right in the center and everything else will look balanced. Now let's take a look at some example of how the rule of third is played out in the drawing. Let's take a look at this example and see how the rule of third is being used. So by placing the rule of third grid, I can tell right away that the artist Use the rule of third to place the character. The characters are aligned at the bottom, at the horizontal line, and two of the characters here are also aligned with the vertical line. This helps to really balance out the overall drawing because you can see there's a lot of things that are going on, but yet the first thing that caught my attention are still the main character. Playing with scale can really help to add more context to the scene. For example, this artist exaggerates the main characters in the drawing by making them very small in contrast with the rest of the object in the scene. This gives us this playful atmosphere and sort of make it seem like very whimsical, almost like a bedtime story theme. And in this drawing, scale is being used um, to kind of represent depth. As you can see here, the main character plays right in the center who is the focal point, is in contrast with the giant tree in the surrounding. And the character is heading towards the background 
as it's heading further away um, in deep in the forest and this gives us a sense of mystery to the drawing. We all know that colour can really associate with how we feel. So, by selecting the right colour can really help to convey the overall mood setting of your story. Let's look at these two examples and understand how colour can associate with the mood we feel. So, on the left side, you can see that the artist mainly used warm colour such as orange and yellow throughout the drawing. And this gives you this instant feeling of happiness and optimistic. And you can see that it matches with the character's expression as she is happy, enjoying the view of the fireflies in her surrounding. Then on the right side, we have a contrast of cool tone color base. And you can see from the focal point who is the main character, she's feeling a little bit sad and she's looking back indicating that she might be leaving something behind and she's feeling sad about it. And to match with the mood, the artist uses a cool color tone to sort of indicate this sense of calmingness, but also can be a sense of mellow as she is leaving something behind. So this is how color can really match the tone that you are going for. So choosing the right color can really enhance your story even further. If you have no idea what color to go for, don't worry, the easiest way that you can do is to just look at existing examples or references that are done by other people and study the colour palette that we use in that drawing. By understanding the colour palette we, that used by the artist, you will get a better understanding of which colour palette suits the mood that you are going for in your visual. Let's take a look at this example and see how we can study the colour palette. So in this drawing, I was intrigued by the colour orange, but I wasn't sure what goes with orange. So a great way is to just break down the colour that existed in this drawing and put it on the side like this as a palette. Right away, it will give you an idea what goes with what. So in the future, if you need a reference, you can just go back to here. Let's take a look at another one. This drawing seems very bright. And when you break down the colour, you can actually see that the artist used a balance of warm tone and also cool tone so right away you can also have an idea next time if you're unsure what goes with bright pink and there you have it it's an easy study that you can do within a minute there are many methods or media you can choose to express your visual storytelling earlier we have looked at a few styles and example but let's look at some more Hopefully it will give you an idea of different styles that you can choose from and you can pick one that is most comfortable for you. So if you're the type of person who do not like to use so much colour or you are into something a little bit more simpler, these are the two types of examples that you might want to consider. For example, let's take a look at the left drawing where the artist only used one tone colour, which is red, but it really helps to highlight the detail in the drawing. That's because we're not distracted by any other color that's happening. And if you are into something more minimal, take a look at the example on the right side. Yes, it looks very, very, very simple, but it tells a story. If you want to be more creative, you can also explore something a bit more conceptual, like these two examples. They're not necessarily uh, realistic, but that's okay because you know, it's your artwork, so feel free to choose any approach you want and don't worry about it being realistic. Or if you are inspired by a quote or a saying that were um, that you heard from the Talkie Talks, you can also choose to highlight the um, text. And for example, on the right side, the text becomes the ocean and it really makes the drawing looks very simple and it kind of makes the audience want to look closer and read your text. And another approach is more hands-on, more sketch uh, looking approach. This is also a great way to show off uh, your personal unique style. And you can do it digitally like the one on the left, or you can do it by hand. So those are just some examples out there. I hope it already gives you some idea of which medium you would like to go for. But do remember whatever style you choose to go for, Make it your own with your personal unique touch.
thank you for listening this far. I hope you find this guide useful for you to start creating your own visual storytelling postcard for the Taoke. We are really excited and looking forward to receiving your creative artwork. But remember, the deadline to submit is on the 12th November 2021 at 11.59 p.m. Good luck, everyone. Don't forget to have fun with the creative process.